Somewhere in Europe, a timber beam shaped by hand before gunpowder warfare is still holding weight, not preserved in a museum, not sealed in plastic. It's working. Meanwhile, modern sealants crack, peel, and quietly fail in twenty years or less. That's the uncomfortable truth no hardware store wants to talk about. Medieval carpenters with no chemistry degrees and no industrial coatings solved wood preservation so well that their methods still outperform many modern shortcuts. And once you understand how they thought, you can't unsee why modern systems keep losing. Let's get straight into it. Their goal was never to make wood waterproof. Their goal was to make it rot-proof. That distinction matters. Rot does not begin with rain. Rot begins when fungi gain access to food, oxygen and stable moisture trapped inside timber. You see, modern sealants often fail because they form a hard skin. And, well, that skin cracks with movement. When that happens, water gets in. Air gets in. But, you know, moisture cannot escape. The result is decay you don't see until the structure is already compromised. Medieval systems worked because they cooperated with wood instead of fighting it. It's fascinating, isn't it? Pine tar was the backbone of medieval wood preservation. Across Scandinavia, the British Isles and much of Europe, pine tar was trusted the way modern builders trust pressure treatment. It was produced by slowly heating resin-rich pine in low oxygen pits, yielding a thick dark substance packed with natural antifungal and water-shedding compounds. Quite ingenious, really. Unlike modern coatings that sit on the surface, pine tar, well, it penetrates deep into the grain. It keeps wood flexible. It sheds water instead of trapping it. It slows fungal growth without sealing pores shut. And crucially, it allows moisture to escape after rain. That is why medieval roof shingles ships, doors, tools and beams survived cold, damp climates for centuries. Pine tar does not harden into a brittle shell. It ages with the wood. A modern application follows the same logic. The timber must be fully dry. Pine tar is gently warmed until it flows. Thin coats are brushed on, not sprayed. Multiple applications over several days allow deep absorption. Mixing pine tar with boiled linseed oil, a blend used in later medieval and early modern Europe, improves penetration and curing. You know, this still works today on sheds, barns, fences and restoration projects where, honestly, longevity matters more than that showroom shine. One of the most overlooked lessons is that medieval preservation was not uh, an afterthought. It was actually part of the build itself. Timber selection mattered, seasoning mattered, orientation mattered. Treatments were applied before wood was locked into places where, you know, moisture could hide. Modern construction often waits until the end, slaps on a sealant and calls it protected. But medieval carpenters assumed maintenance was, well, inevitable and designed systems that could be renewed without stripping layers or trapping water. That mindset alone explains why so many medieval structures outlast modern ones. Where pine tar was not suitable, especially indoors or on visible framing, medieval carpenters turned to mineral solutions. 
lime wash was one of the most important. Made from burned limestone, lime created an alkaline surface hostile to fungi and insects. It did more than disinfect. Lime reflected light, reduced surface moisture, and allowed airflow through timber. Beams in halls, barns, and cellars were repeatedly brushed with lime wash, especially in smoky or humid environments. This wasn't cosmetic. It was biological control. Ash base washes were also used. Wood ash mixed with water and strained creates a solution that subtly raises the pH of the timber surface. That shift alone makes the environment less welcoming to decay organisms. Modern builders can still apply this, you know. Lime wash works exceptionally well on interior structural wood or shaded exterior areas. And, well, ash water can be brushed onto unfinished wood before assembly. These methods don't seal wood off. Instead, they change the conditions that rot depends on. Here's a detail most people miss. Medieval carpenters often paired oak and other tannin-rich woods with iron fasteners. When iron oxidizes in contact with tannins, it forms iron tannate. That compound, you see, resists decay organisms. This reaction darkens the wood which is, well, why beams around medieval nails often appear blackened. But that darkening is strength. It explains why wood around old iron fasteners is often harder and better preserved than surrounding timber. The metal was not a weakness. It was part of the preservation system. A modern equivalent is, well, simple. Untreated iron hardware paired with oak or chestnut recreates the same chemistry. Even iron solutions made by soaking iron scraps in vinegar can be brushed onto tannin-rich wood to trigger the reaction. No synthetics required. Medieval carpenters never relied on treatments alone. Design did most of the work. Beams were raised off soil on stone bases. Roofs were steep to shed rain quickly. Eaves extended far beyond walls. End grain was protected through joinery instead of being left exposed. Airflow was always considered. These choices, you see, prevented stable damp conditions from forming. Fungi, after all, need consistent moisture to thrive. Anyone building today, honestly, can apply this same logic. Just keep wood out of direct soil contact. Make sure to allow ventilation beneath floors and always design structures that dry rapidly after rain. No sealant, really, can compensate for bad design. Medieval builders understood that instinctively. Modern sealants, well, they prioritize speed, appearance, and short-term guarantees. They harden, they crack, and, you know, they fail invisibly. When they fail, they often trap moisture where it causes the most damage. Medieval methods, on the other hand, prioritize long-term performance and repairability. Pine tar and lime wash could be renewed without stripping layers. Maintenance was expected and simple. These systems were abandoned not because they failed, 
but because they did not fit industrial timelines. World War II accelerated this shift. Industrial building demanded speed, uniformity, and materials that required minimal skill to apply. Longevity beyond a few decades stopped being the priority. For restorers, homesteaders, and anyone thinking beyond fragile supply chains, medieval wood preservation offers proven low-tech solutions. These methods require no factories, no petrochemicals, and no planned obsolescence. They have already survived centuries of weather, neglect, war, and use. That includes fires, freezing winters, and social collapse. Few modern systems can claim that record. History earns its place when its lessons are put back to work. If this breakdown sharpened how you think about craftsmanship that lasts longer than a lifetime, subscribe to History HQ. Share this with anyone who builds, restores, or cares about skills that don't expire when the warranty does. The past still has work to do.